Darren Aronofsky's Mother is one of those films that I knew walking out of it would be one of those films that would cause division among moviegoers. But it has surprisingly caused more division than I thought. I originally thought walking out of it that critics would love this film and audiences would hate it. But it turns out that critics are also divided on this film as well. Some critics have deemed Darren Aronofsky's film as masturbatory and pretentious, while other critics are deeming it as a cinematic masterpiece. I personally love it when filmmakers like Darren Aronofsky are not afraid to go through with their artistic vision and take those ballsy risks in order to create the product that they want to make. That is just something that I highly appreciate in film, and my favorite kind of films are the ones that leave you constantly thinking and allow your imagination to run wild for quite some time after you've already seen the film. And Darren Aronofsky's mother achieved just that. So in this video, I'm going to attempt to interpret and explain all of the metaphors and allegories that are woven throughout this film. So to make this clear, this is just my personal interpretation of the film that I believe makes the most consistent sense. And this should be obvious, but this video is only for those who have actually seen the film. If you have not seen the film and you do not want this spoiled for you, please check out my spoiler free video for Mother. The link will be in the description box below. So let's just dive straight into it. You've probably already heard this in different analysis videos and also during the press for this film. But yes, this film is filled with biblical allusions. Every single character in this film represents either a character or a story from the Bible. Javier Bardem's character represents the biblical God. He just has to be some kind of supernatural god because there is absolutely no way that a human being can survive an explosion headfirst like that without a scratch on them. Javier Bardem's wife, played by Jennifer Lawrence, is supposed to represent Mother Nature or Mother Earth. Michelle Pfeiffer and Ed Harris are supposed to represent Adam and Eve. And their sons, played by the Gleason brothers, are obviously supposed to represent the Cain and Abel story. That one seemed more obvious to me, and I think most people will be able to see that one. So let's go back to Javier Bardem's character and why he represents the biblical god. Well, just like the biblical god, Javier Bardem's character is obsessed with being worshipped by people. Throughout this entire film, he is such a selfish person who only cares about himself and what other people think about him. And he has this incredible, unnerving, and unhealthy obsession to be worshipped by other people. Even though his wife, Mother Earth, gives him so much love, it's just not enough for him. The only reason that the biblical God created the Earth is so that it can house humans and that it can lay a foundation so that humans can thrive and also be alive to worship him. So to the biblical God, the Earth really isn't what's special. What's special to him are the humans living on Earth. Which again is why throughout the entire film, Javier Bardem's character is not phased at all by all of the people that are invading his privacy and coming into his home. Because that's what he made it for. He didn't make the Earth just so the Earth can be Earth and just be there. He made the Earth so that way humans can come and live in it and do whatever they please in it. He is only willing to give kindness and give forgiveness to those who worship him and praise him. The only reason why Javier Bardem allowed Michelle Pfeiffer and Ed Harris to stay in the house for so long, even after they literally broke his most sacred stone, is because he still wants their company because they are constantly worshiping him. Instead of just kicking them out and settling it that way, he would rather just board up his private room and allow them to stay in the house just so he can continue to have people in his house that admire him and praise him. Even more obviously in the third act of the film where we get that insanely intense and graphic scene where the baby is getting pulled away by a mob of people as his neck breaks as the baby gets chopped up into bits and sacrificed and eaten which is also something very biblical that happens numerous times throughout the bible. It could also just be a cult representation of how Christians look like when they do the practice of eating the body of Christ. But the point that I'm getting at is that even after all of the people that worship him, even after they did something so incredibly disgusting and horrific, like devouring his own child, he is still ready to forgive them and ready to move on, just so that he can still have his giant group of followers that worship him, because he would rather have a giant group of people worship him than to be the moral one and to put his foot down and say, hey, that was really messed up. And this is again because the God of the Bible is just so 
infatuated and obsessed with other people worshiping him. Now on to Jennifer Lawrence's character. Yes, she is Mother Earth or Mother Nature, whatever you want to call it. And the house is also supposed to represent Mother Earth. Her and the house are one. Which is why there are numerous times in this film where you can see her character put her ear against the wall as she can feel and see the house's heartbeat as if it's her own because it is her own. The house and her are the same thing. They're supposed to represent Mother Nature and Mother Earth. Now, Mother Nature and God don't really go well together, which is why there is so much conflict between these two characters throughout the entire film. Mother Nature is totally fine with being left alone. All Mother Nature wants to do is be with its creator, which is Javier Bardem's character, and just be left alone because Mother Nature does not need humanity to thrive. Humanity needs Mother Nature to thrive. It really creates this vicious trifecta because humanity needs Mother Earth, but they don't respect Mother Earth, which is ultimately the big political climate statement throughout the film but Mother Nature does not need humanity. All Mother Nature wants to do is be alone with its creator, but its creator doesn't really care about Mother Nature. It only cares about being worshiped by humanity, but humanity cannot exist without Mother Nature. And the odd man out in this trifecta that really isn't getting any respect at all from either side is Mother Nature. Humanity at least respects God and worships God, and God is obsessed with humanity worshiping him, so he respects his creation of humanity. But Mother Earth and Mother Nature just seems to be isolated and disrespected. Mother Nature is being exploited and used by God and humanity so they can both just get what they want. All Jennifer Lawrence's character is trying to do throughout this entire movie is just give and give. She tries to give to humanity and she's constantly giving to God throughout this entire film. She gives and she gives until there's nothing else left to give. Which again is supposed to be metaphorically symbolic to the earth and climate change and how the earth just keeps giving and giving and we just keep shitting on it as humans. I'll talk about this and dive into this more in a little bit, but let me move on to why Michelle Pfeiffer and Ed Harris's character represents Adam and Eve. One's male, one's female, and they're the first people to enter Mother Nature, which is the house. Again, the house also represents Mother Nature. So these two are the first people outside of God and Mother Nature to set foot inside the earth. And both Adam and Eve are told numerous times to not go into his private room and to mess with his sacred stone, but yet they are tempted to keep going back and doing it. And that's exactly what they keep doing. They keep trying to go in there, they try to go in there, and eventually, they go in there and they break the stone, which again is supposed to be an allusion to the Adam and Eve story where God tells Adam and Eve to not eat from the sacred tree, but with time they eventually do anyway. And that's what it was supposed to allude to and that's why they represent Adam and Eve. And their two sons played by the Gleason brothers represent Cain and Abel because I mean, it's almost by the numbers the same kind of story. It's implied that the father Ed Harris left much more on the will for one of the brothers so the brother played by Dom Hall Gleason is supposed to represent Kane because he gets incredibly jealous because of this. And he eventually gets so infuriated and pissed off that he strikes him in the neck with like a door handle or something, which is very similar to the story in the Bible. I believe that Cain strikes Abel in the head with a stone, if I'm not mistaken. So that is why the story of the two brothers leading up to the death of one brother is an allegory to the actual biblical story of Cain and Abel. And these two biblical allusions occur in the second act of the film. The third act is literally just a gigantic comment on the behaviors of humanity. This is the part of the film where Javier Bardem's character gets insanely famous overnight because he gained inspiration from exploiting Mother Nature by getting Mother Nature pregnant, therefore giving him some inspiration to create his best work yet. So at this point of the film, humanity just raids Mother Nature, has no respect for it. They love God so much, they respect God, which is Javier Bardem's character. They worship him, they love him, but they have absolutely no respect for the home. They tear the place apart. They treat Jennifer Lawrence's character like shit. They trample her, they beat her up. They rip her clothes off. They sacrifice her son. They don't listen to a damn thing she says the entire film. They throw incredibly disgusting insults at her, like calling her an arrogant C word that rhymes with hunt. And just the entire third act, in my opinion, is supposed to be this comment on how humanity 
loves God, loves to worship God, loves religion, but when it comes to taking care of the earth and caring about precautions of the earth and caring about the well-being and the health status of the earth, they simply don't care. They just want to keep using up the resources. Even when people of high authority is warning them that what they're doing is bad, they still keep on doing it because of their own selfish motivations and their obsession with God himself. And there's also a little cheeky comment towards humanity when Jennifer Lawrence's character finds a few people attempting to paint the house and she's like, what are you doing? And they're like, well, we're, we're just trying to help. You know, we're all here to help you. We're just, we're just helping out. And she's like, no, I don't, I don't need your help. I, I don't need it. Just, just stop what you're doing and get out of my house. And you know, that's just a smart little fun commentary about how we as humans like to pretend like we're doing something good for the earth by doing these small mundane things. But at the end of the day, if we really want to help the earth, we should honestly just go extinct. So at the very end of the film where Javier Bardem's character is carrying Jennifer Lawrence's burnt body up the stairs, he admits that he as an artist is never going to be satisfied. It's never enough with him and he needs to be constantly creating new things. He needs to be constantly worshipped for the new things that he's creating. As the biblical God, he is always unsatisfied, which is why he chooses to keep replaying and redoing this entire thing over and over again so we can have the opportunity to keep creating, keep inspiring, but also unfortunately at the same time keep shitting on mother nature. Which is why the girl that we see at the end of the bed isn't really Jennifer Lawrence, it's kind of this like new revised version of Jennifer Lawrence. Because the previous Mother Earth had no more love to give, and he had to create something that was fresher and revised. Well, that's going to be a wrap on this video, guys. I really hope that you guys found this video to be thought-provoking and hopefully shed some light on some things that you might have not known after walking out of the film. I'm sure there's a lot more I could dive into and analyze in regards to this film, and I might make a second video uh, talking about, you know, other themes that are also conveyed within this film. But for right now, I still kind of have to let this film simmer and just to kind of let it sink in. So if anybody else has any kind of interpretations that are different from mine and would like to contribute them in the comment section, please do so. Those comments are highly appreciated and welcomed. And if you really like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it amongst your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to the Misfit Pawn channel to be updated on more film-related content.